Welcome back guys to the final video in our three-part series on how to make long-range uh, shots in the wind. And we're going to get right into it. These are the uh, information that we gathered in part two. Here's a link to it if you haven't watched that yet. Go back and watch it or this will not make as much sense to you. And um, here's the first bird of the day. And as it flies in, we'll stop frame right here. And I was on this bird from the very beginning. This was my target from the very start. Okay, now before we get into looking at the chair gun for that particular bird, I want to show you that um, the, the reticle drop down menu here, I chose my reticle hawk has all of their own reticles put in here. But if you don't have a hawk scope, not a big deal. You can use the one at the top, the generic mill dot, second, second one down there. And, uh, and that'll work for your basic 10x power standard mill dot scope. So that being said, um, the hawk 20x was mine. And you can see up in the right hand area here um, that I was shooting at 10x power. So just for reference, this is what the graph would look like if you were using a standard 10x mil dot reticle. Okay, and just a quick refresher. This was an overhead view of my shot line, and the wind was fluctuating between 30 and 60 degrees at about 20 to 30 miles per hour that day. So how much difference can 30 degrees make um, with respect to the shooting angle? Well, let me show you. On a day like this, when it's blowing 20, 25 miles per hour, and your target is 88 yards away, which is what this one was, 80 meters away, um, if I'm shooting with a 60 degree wind, it is gives me approximately 16 and a half inches of wind drift. But if you see here on the 30 degree graph, it would give me about nine and a half inches of wind drift. That's completely missing the target. That's seven inches. Um, so if you don't judge your wind properly, it's going to make a huge difference. There's not a lot of um, margin for error for that. You've got to be accurate when the wind is blowing this hard. So what we're going to do now is see if chair gun confirms the data that I estimated while out in the field. My magnification is 10x. My zero range for the scope was 55 yards that day. The wind I suspected was around 20 miles an hour. The wind angle 60 degrees my muzzle velocity 900 feet per second and um, and the incline over here far left is 20 degrees this dark green line represents the trajectory with no wind and no incline the dashed green line is with the wind and the light blue dashed line is the trajectory with the incline so as you can see the wind plays almost no part in it so we're not going to pay attention to that at all it's the incline that we're going to pay attention to here and at 88 yards going up here we see that we have a two mil dot holdover for this shot and looking over here at the windage at 88 yards we have 16.7 inches of windage to account for so remembering that my mil dot scope is true at 20x and I'm shooting at 10x power then essentially each dash line here is one mil dot. So the spacing between each mil dot is actually two mil dots. So that said, um, holdover is easy. It's two mil dots, one, two, and that's the holdover spot. The windage is a little more complicated. Chirigan doesn't give you the windage hold in mil dots. It gives it to you in inches. So at 100 yards, we know that each dot on the reticle is 3.6 inches. But at 88 yards, each dot is approximately 3.1, 3.2 inches. So here's the math. You can take a look at it. And what you need to do then is divide the 16.7 inches of windage that chair gun calculates and divide that by 3.15 inches per dot. And that is how many dots you dope for windage. So based on the information that I estimated in the field, this is the shot chair gun would predict. And here's the shot as it really happened.
Now what's important to note is that this isn't a reflection on Chirigan's accuracy, but rather on my own numerical estimations versus my shooting intuition. Chirigan is only as good as the numbers you plug into it, but considering the conditions and how much guesswork I was doing, that was pretty close. So now that you guys have a feel for how I'm doing this, I'm going to move faster through the rest of these examples. Here's the second bird. So the conditions were identical to that first bird, except this bird was taken at 98 yards rather than 88 yards. So we can see that all the same data are in place, and we're just taking a bit longer shot here. But that longer shot means that there is now more space in between each mill dot. This one's at 98 yards, almost 100. We're just going to call it 100 for um, simplicity's sake. And that means there's 3.6 inches in between each dot as opposed to 3.15 inches at 88 yards. So as you can see at 98 yards, Cherry Gun predicts a holdover of 2.8 mil dots, almost 3 and a windage hold of almost, well, basically 21 inches. So 21 inches divided by 3.6 inches per dot equals 5.8 dots. Moments like this certainly must make Sir Isaac Newton smile. Here's bird number three, the wind had picked up. So this was a shorter shot at 80 yards, but the wind had picked up a little bit. Um, I estimated it to be about 25 miles per hour for this shot, and it also rolled behind me a little bit at about a 45 degree angle as opposed to a 60 degree angle. So looking at this graph, at 80 yards we have about a 1 and 1 third mil dot holdover and over here at uh, the windage we see it's about 14 inches. I got a couple emails uh, saying that people didn't believe me when I said that this guy was dead before he hit the ground in the last video. But watch him fall off right here. Yeah, he has got nothing left in his tank. He got hit like a hammer. This bird was done. So here's the fourth and final bird. The conditions were the exact same as bird number one and bird number two. Two mil dot holdover and 5.3 dot windage. The high estimation on those two 88 yard shots kind of leads me to think that this might have been a 90 or maybe a 92 yard shot. The range estimator could have easily been a, a few yards off judging by which part of that railing it picked up on. And finally if anybody had any worries about whether or not these birds went to waste, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there were no cats in the picture for the first video, but as you can see here, uh, these kitties made quick work of these birds. And that marks the end of this three-part series. Um, the whole thing took about a half an hour, so I appreciate your time, guys, and I hope you found it interesting. Until next time, thank you for watching.